This program is brought to you by BASF, the chemical company. Hey, welcome to Stuff to Blow Your Kid's Mind. My name is Robert Lamb. And my name is Julie Douglas, and today we are talking about static electricity. You know static electricity. You shuffle across a carpeted floor, you reach out and you touch a doorknob, and there's that spark, that shock. That's static electricity. But before we can talk about static electricity, we have to talk about atoms. Now, everything we see is made up of atoms, and right here we have representation of a couple of atoms hanging out. Now, atoms are composed of protons, neutrons, and most importantly, electrons. Our representations of the atom each have some electrons in them. Mine has two. And mine also has two. Now, normally atoms are neutrally charged, and they have the same amount of electrons and protons, and that's what you see here. But what happens when these two atoms rub against each other? What we have is an electron exchange. I have an electron that jumps from this atom to yours. So now I have a single electron giving me a positive charge. And you have three giving you a negative charge. That's right. So now our atoms know that there's an imbalance and they want to correct that. So they're going to be super attracted to each other so that one electron can jump ship and they're now balanced out. Right, now we have a neutral charge again. But what happens if both of these atoms has an extra electron in play? Okay, well... Now there's repulsion between these two atoms. They don't want to touch each other. That's right. They have no business with each other. They have no electrons to try to exchange. So that explains repulsion. So to look at this a little bit more, we're going to do a simple experiment with a balloon in your hair. That's right. I'm going to grab a helium balloon here. But the balloon you use can just be a normal balloon filled with air. It doesn't matter. But Julie, if you will take that. Oh, uh, with pleasure. OK, so you just want to rub the hair really, really, really well. Get a lot of static built up. And then, voila, look at that. Uh, it's pretty great. I mean, what you have here is an exchange of those electrons to Robert's hair. And the reason why Robert's hair is sticking up so very well is that now all those little hairs are positively charged and they are repulsed. That's why they're standing on end trying to get away from one another. So there you have it, static electricity. And uh, in our next segment, we're going to start to talk about just how powerful a force static electricity really is. In our experiment, we were able to observe how this spark jumps from a positively charged atom to a negatively charged atom. And we can actually observe this happening in the world around us. If I shuffle across a carpeted floor and then I reach out and I touch a doorknob, the electrons are actually traveling up from the negatively charged uh, floor through my body and then jump from my finger to the doorknob. And I can feel that spark. And if the uh, lights are dimmed, I can actually see that spark. And a similar thing actually happens during an electrical storm in the sky. That's right, in the form of lightning, because it's basically the same process. What you have is you have a cloud that has positively charged particles on the top and negatively charged particles on the bottom. And all those particles begin to collide with each other, rub up against each other, and it creates static electricity. So the upper portion of the cloud is essentially the carpet, and the lower portion of the cloud is the doorknob positive charge, negative charge, and the, the uh, electrons want to flow between the two. But they don't have a human to bridge these, uh, these two layers. So what happens is an electrical field builds up between positive and negative, and the air ionizes, forging a pathway for the electricity to flow through. It builds up, it builds up, it builds up, and suddenly it breaks, zapping down through the atmosphere and connecting these two layers. That's right. And boom, you've got a huge, massive electrical charge being delivered to the Earth. And while that may seem instantaneous, the fact of the matter is that those charged particles have been doing a delicate dance up in the clouds to create this spectacular light show for us. Wow, so uh, lightning storms on Earth are pretty intense. But what does the rest of the solar system have for us? Okay, take Jupiter and Saturn. Turns out that the lightning flashes on those planets were 1,000 times more powerful than the ones we see here on Earth. Wow, that is pretty intense. But have those storms ever kick-started life as we know it? Mm, not that we know of. There's this amazing theory, and to understand it, we have to travel back close to 4 billion years in the past to an age of towering volcanoes and lifeless tidal pools. And with those lifeless tidal pools, we also have an atmosphere that is filled with carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and nitrogen, which are pretty important elements when you're trying to create a recipe for life. Those tidal pools are full of inorganic compounds. There's nothing living in there at all. And the atmosphere above the volcano is crackling with electrical energy generated by the volcanic activity. 
So a lightning bolt arches down through the sky, hits the tidal pool, and actually creates the uh, amino acids that are the building blocks of life as we know it. So you can kind of think of it as a Frankenstein and almost like bringing this electricity down to these elements and animating them until they eventually become life here on Earth. So when you shuffle across a carpet and you feel that static buzz on the tips of your fingers, that's not only a great way to shock your sister, it's the power that may have shocked life into existence on this ancient, ancient world. This program is brought to you by BASF, the chemical company.